We start the afternoon with breaking news following the death of former football star OJ Simpson, a name well known in households during the unforgettable 1994 trial and to the slaying of his ex wife, one which Simpson was acquitted of all charges. According to Simpson's family, he lost his battle to prostate cancer on Wednesday. Simpson was 76 at the time of his death. A hard start to this afternoon, but still, thank you for joining us. I'm Journey Taylor. We want to get over to meteorologist Nathan Scott. As it appeared, the rain has moved on out. Nathan, when I left the house this morning at 4 o'clock, it was raining, but it looks like the sun is coming out. Changes as expected, Journey. Yes. We had <laughs> a soggy start to our Thursday, but things have really improved. The rain has moved out of most of Arkansas. One lone shower still lingering into Phillips County, but that's quickly exiting into Mississippi. And not only the rain has moved out, but the clouds have also exited. So temperatures are warming up into the upper 60s right now in Little Rock, 65 in Arkadelphia, 65 in Russellville. You'll see clearing skies if you're watching us to the east in Stuttgart. Just give it some time. Sunshine is headed in your direction. Those winds, they're still on the gusty side. We've got them kicking in from the north northwest about 15 to as high as 30 miles per hour. We still have that wind advisory in effect until 3 o'clock this afternoon. Temperatures today topping out into the upper 60s to lower 70s. A beautiful afternoon to get outside and tonight with clear skies in place. We're dropping back down into the low to mid 40s. Maybe some upper 30s in the Washita's and also the Ozarks and Friday to close out the work week looks even better. A light breeze out there and the temperatures climbing up into the low to mid 70s. 80s. That's what's on tap this weekend. I'll have more on that forecast coming up. It's officially a new era for Arkansas men's basketball. The school welcomed new head coach John Calipari yesterday. THV 11's Tyler Class was there and shares some of the excitement. The head coach of your Arkansas Razorbacks, John Calipari! With that, a new era of Arkansas basketball got underway, and John Calipari wasted no time introducing himself to the Bud Walton faithful. My friends call me Johnny, Johnny Calipari. I bring people together. It's what I've always tried to do. So what exactly does bring Coach Cal from a true blue blood like Kentucky to here at Arkansas? Well, it all came down to a chicken man and a Catholic priest. John Tyson, I need you to talk to my AD. Well, I'm in Phoenix. He's in Phoenix. And um, we had a priest with us, a Catholic priest. He gave mass one morning in his room. And I said to him, Father, I've got to decide what I'm going to do here. One is Arkansas, the other is Kentucky. And he told me, go for an hour walk and have in your mind, you're the Arkansas coach. And I'll be honest, when I thought about coming here and building this program and making it something special, it got me excited. The task ahead is daunting, and we'll talk plenty about that as roster building gets underway. But for now, the excitement coming from Bud Walton Arena and emanating throughout the whole state is palpable. In Fayetteville, Tyler Cass, THV 11 Sports. With the bang of a gavel, the 2024 fiscal season got underway yesterday for Arkansas lawmakers and sitting atop of the agenda, a massive budget waiting final approval. Governor Sanders taking the podium, touching on key issues, which she says she's been working to address since taking office. Part of her plan comes from an estimated $109 million budget increase that's set to go toward education and advancing the Arkansas Learns Voucher Program. We are building a better, a safer, and a stronger Arkansas. Our priorities are reflected in the budget. And those priorities don't stop with education. Another $3.8 million will go toward state police to aid crime reduction efforts. Well, money talks, and if you have a teenager at home in need of a summer job, you need to act fast on an opportunity with the city of Little Rock. The summer youth employment application is open until this coming Sunday, and according to program leaders, it's something that aims to develop the next generation of the working class. Young people come in raw and, and, and uh, not a lot of skills, but then go on to be uh, great. Uh, one prime example, we had young men that came in shy 
ended up getting a number of scholarships. Now he just finished his doctorate in, in physics. You can find more information online at THV11.com. One family is once again fighting for justice after a judge hits the reverse on a massive $32 million payment to the parents of Ethan Schweichel. That money initially being awarded to them for the death of their 17-year-old son, who was shot and killed by a Benton police officer in 2016. The city of Benton and its former police chief were held accountable for failing to train the officer responsible for Ethan's death. But earlier this week, a judge rolled back that ruling. Official records show he was properly trained and supervised. We value all life. Many of our officers are parents themselves. This was a tragedy for everyone involved. That was a video released by Benson Police defending the new ruling, one that Ethan's parents say they plan to appeal. An investigation continues by the National Transportation Safety Board into the cargo ship that crashed into the Baltimore Bridge. The chair of the board says her team has interviewed over 18 people so far as they tried to crack down on what happened. They're focusing on what went wrong with the ship's electrical system, which is why Hyundai experts are working to determine if anything malfunctioned. And I don't care about me. I care about the six workers on that bridge, their families. I care about our investigators. I care when there's not a backup to them and they're on duty 24 seven. New 3D imaging shows where the bridge collapsed. Hamidi is calling on the federal government to provide better peer protection. Doctors in Arizona left in limbo after a ruling from the state Supreme Court could hold them responsible for violating new abortion restrictions. Earlier this week, the state's high court reinstated a law from 1864, which enforces a near total ban on abortions. That same law calls for doctors to serve a mandatory two to five year sentence if found in violation. The state's governor pushed lawmakers to repeal the law, but the Arizona Republicans blocked those efforts. Devastation continues for residents dealing with the aftermath of severe weather. CBS's Elisa Turner has more on the state slammed by violent storms. Wow! Big, big tornado! Forecasters say the twister that touched down in Slidell Wednesday was wow. at least an EF1, oh. packing winds up to 110 miles an hour. Severe damage right across the road from there. The storm downed trees and power lines, shearing the roofs off of some buildings and ripping straight through others. 50 people had to be evacuated from one apartment building. Scenes of damage like this one are what we're seeing all over this coastal community. Trees uprooted, cars tossed about, and even one landing on its side. Just south in New Orleans, flash flooding inundated roads and left some vehicles stranded. And in Alabama, waves crashed onto the Mobile Causeway, shutting down a major stretch of the road. Parts of Texas were also submerged and hit by tornadoes. An EF1 brought severe damage to the Katy area and an EF2 touched down in Port Arthur. Back in Slidell, we met Alicia Turner. I just kept thinking that this roof is going to come tumbling down because you could hear it. You could feel the pressure. You could hear the wind. You could hear the glass shattering. She told us she and her family sheltered in their hallway as the tornado slammed their house. All the windows were blown out. The door was broken. I go outside. We have beautiful oak trees that are completely uprooted. It was heartbreaking. Tom Hanson, CBS News. Internet users will soon find it a bit easier to weave out hidden fees and know exactly how much they're being charged each billing cycle. Thanks to new broadband labels, Internet packages will soon provide a breakdown of pricing for Internet services. The Federal Communications Commission making that a requirement earlier this week. An official say it's a tool that can help you have a clear understanding before signing up for services. The Summer Olympics tossing in a game changer. After this, how competing track stars have an even bigger reason to go all in. And it has been a soggy week here in Arkansas, but look at that nice stretch of dry weather. Today, Friday, into the weekend, and the chance of rain goes up 
for next week. I'll have more details on that and if there's a potential of severe weather coming up.